100 for 100. This is the podcast where uh, for all you newer movie watchers out there, if you're like, man, I kind of want to watch films, but there's too much stuff out there. I've done the homework for you. I've taken 100 of the of the best, I would say, entry-ish level films, and I've ranked them from 100 to 1 for your pleasure and convenience. And uh, and accompanied a 100-word review for each one of these here on joints. Yesterday, we talked about Casino Royale. Today, we're going back to the 90s. Taking back to the 90s for number 52 on this list, Boys in the Hood. 1991, directed by uh, John Singleton, his first movie, Rest in Peace, to John Singleton. Um, let's get into this 100-word review. As far as freshman efforts go... John Singleton's Boys in the Hood is one of the gold standards. Released during a wave of films that brought the urban to the rural, it uh, stands as a shining example of respect for the culture. Featuring a story that shows both the best and the worst parts of neighborhood life, in South Central Los Angeles, it kickstarted the careers of Cuba Gooding Jr., Ice Cube, Nia Long, Angela Bassett, and others. Gang life family life, and a tragic death all mixed together to make this film powerful and insightful. Uh, look, I don't think Cooper Gooding Jr. is by any stretch of the imagination a good actor. I don't know how this dude has an Oscar. Uh, he does a fine enough job here. I think Cuba is really bolstered by the supporting cast. And by supporting cast, honestly, I'm talking about Lawrence Fishburne. This, I think, is Lawrence Fishburne's greatest role and that pains me to say because i really love morpheus but i think this might be um lawrence fishburne's greatest role angela bassett does great as well as a, as a, as a, a take no shit type mom i love take no shit moms in film um ice cube uh, his first uh performance i do believe it's uh as doughboy is wonderful because I, I knew people like that he's just he just he's always gonna be that hood dude from the day he was born to the day he dies there there's no changing Every once in a while, I'm cool with a character that just always is going to be that character no matter what. Some people just don't change, progress, or regress in life. They just stay in this lane, and that's what they do. Um, I, I'd be remiss to point out that without this movie, we do not get Friday. I'm pretty sure it was John Singleton that convinced Ice Cube to make that movie. So shout out to Boys in the Hood for giving us Friday, which was uh, lower down on our list. This is, I think, the best example of life in California during this time they would these storytellers wanted to take their experiences what they'd seen in life and and give them to people who were not familiar with this that was the whole point of that is the whole point was supposedly the what used to be the point of hip-hop music it was taking uh it was street reporting it was taking the the events the uh the sales the transactions the all that kind of the life and then reporting on it to people who had didn't even know what this life was like. And I think this, there's no coincidence that this came out in the 90s, which is also considered the golden era of hip-hop. These two things go hand-in-hand. Hand. They're synonymous with each other, which is why, uh, in fact, we can spoil it. Ricky's death is mentioned so much in hip-hop is because, you know, that was, that was real shit. That's just how shit went down. Uh, Morse Chestnut as Ricky. Ricky didn't make it, but, you know, it happens. Uh, the, the, there's some every once in a while, uh, like the common set on one of his songs, the one from the hood that was chose, that was Ricky. He was going to go pro. I have absolutely no doubt in my mind. Um, also, you see that uh, Ricky wasn't the smartest kid. <laughs> you know, when the scout comes to talk to him from, what was it, like Florida State? I think I think it was like Florida State or something like that. Uh, you find out that he has dedicated his life so much to sports. Um, he really doesn't know much else. And he kind of is some of the ignorance shows when he's talking to that scout. And then you saw the negative effects that, uh, that, uh, Ricky and Doughboy's mom fawning and giving all the attention to Ricky. You saw how that affected Doughboy. So that kind of, that kind of steered him on this path to being that hood dude. Cause he never really got that affection because so much of it was being showered on Ricky. Uh, I think, like I said, Cuba Gooden Jr. does a fine job. Uh, Nia Long does a fine job as well, uh, but man, Lawrence Fishburne that one that character resonates with me as uh, as as Cooper Gooden Jr.'s dad in that film. He was I like the fact that he came up like he started off as kind of like an older 
hood dude, or maybe he just kind of lived in the hood. But then as time progressed, you saw that he uh, he had his own business. He was really doing something for himself. And th- that is that's wonderful. It's wonderful to see that kind of thing. So if you've never checked out Boys in the Hood, make sure you do that. Number 52 on this list, Boys in the Hood.